so excited for you guys to listen to today's episode. It's such an incredible conversation that inspired the heck out of me to really get my health in check and learn more about Ayurveda, something I knew nothing about. So I'm really excited for you to listen to it. And before we jump into today's episode, I wanted to share something that I've created that's going to be launching in the new year. And I've created a six-week group coaching program, and it's called Show Up Like a Boss. And what I've noticed in entrepreneurs, people in the online space, people that have network marketing businesses, is that you have to put yourself out there. You can't just put a post on your Instagram story and think everyone's going to buy it from you. And people have a hard time with putting themselves out there, with talking into the camera, with really letting themselves be seen for who they are. And it's because we're so afraid that we're going to be judged. We're so afraid that it's not going to be perfect enough. And we're so afraid of what other people think. And so I've created a program to help you if you're ready to get over the fear of judgment, if you're ready to get over the fear of rejection, and you're ready to reprogram your mindset so you can show up, show up in your business, rank up in your company, learn how to specifically get your audience to know, like, and trust you, how to powerfully put yourself out there and speak confidently into the camera. I want to help you share your story because your story is what will impact people. I want, you to, I want to help you feel confident going live on Facebook or Instagram and really start to manifest building a community in your own authentic voice and your own authentic confidence. And ultimately, when you show up, you'll make more money because you're sharing yourself in a way that you never have before and your intention is to serve people. And so it's a six-week program to help you master the art of showing up powerfully so you can make your income match your impact. So if you're interested in this program, it is application only. So what will happen is I'll leave the link to the application for the program and then you'll book a discovery call with me. So we'll get on the phone together and make sure that it's the right program for you because I'm only accepting women that are 100% ready to step into their power and make a difference so they can make more money in their life. And not just make more money for like, the things, but like to create freedom, like real true freedom. The application is in the show notes, so go ahead and fill that out and I cannot wait to connect with you. So it's like everything you do can either create more of that same energy or it will take you to the opposite quality. Welcome to the Badass Manifester Podcast. Keeping you inspired with high vibe content, bringing you the best manifestation and mindset tools, teachings, interviews, and answering questions to help empower you to get out of your own way and take massive action to make magic your everyday normal. I'm your host, Ashley Gordon, spiritual life and manifestation coach, helping women and spiritual entrepreneurs manifest more impact, influence, and income. It is my purpose and pleasure to help you wake up to the badass creator that you are. Let's do this. Today is a really special episode because I'm bringing on a guest, another female online entrepreneur that I have been able to connect with because she lives in my area, which is super cool. And she is an Ayurveda health counselor, yoga teacher, on a mission to make Ayurveda easy to apply to your everyday life. Her name is Angela Perger, and she created the Simple Ayurveda brand and is the host of the Simple Ayurveda podcast. And I'm so excited to be with her today. We're in person. We're connecting. And it's so awesome to have you here. I'm so glad you're on the show. woo <laughs> Yay! I'm so happy to be here. Awesome! So, I don't know about you guys listening, but I literally know nothing about Ayurveda. Like, I've wanted to know about it. I'm curious about it. You know, like, I know that you have to, like, look at your tongue sometimes and, like, examine, like, what your tongue means, like, what that means in Ayurveda language, but I really know nothing about it. So, Angela, will you just share a little bit about what Ayurveda is and, like, how you got so connected to it? Yes. So Ayurveda means the science of life, or sometimes it's translated as the wisdom of life. 
Wow. And I first heard about it during my 200-hour yoga teacher training as an intro eight years ago, but I was a little bit confused by it. <laughs> and um, most of the resources that I could find confused me even more. <laughs> and then two years ago, one of my yoga students reintroduced me to Ayurveda, and I decided to study it a little more deeply because I have ulcerative colitis, or I had it, <laughs> and I tried so many different diets and different healing modalities over the years, but I still would need to take prescription drugs, and deep down, I knew that I didn't want to, and that, that I didn't want that to be my fate forever, and I, I felt like I, there was some answer that I just didn't know yet, and for me, Ayurveda, Ayurveda ended up being that answer. Wow, that's amazing. That's so cool, and I want to definitely ask you more about that. And, like, when I think of the word Ayurveda, I think of I, – I thought it was, like, only food. But you're saying it's, like, a whole way of life? Yes, it's everything. So the whole point of it is that, just like we were saying before we started recording, like, you know that you shouldn't have three cups of coffee a day, yet there's something that's drawing you to do that. Right. There could be things that – you know you shouldn't be doing and then there could be things that you don't even realize that you're doing that Mm. are taking you out of balance so in ayurveda there are three doshas vata pitta and kapha okay wait what's a dosha the dosha is like the energy okay uh, like energy that happens in nature and it just sort of forms into different types of energies um and it's based on the five elements so the five elements that everything in nature the building blocks are earth water, fire, air, which could be wind, and ether, which is like empty space, like the sky. Cool. So those are the five building blocks that animals are created from, mountains, everything is has these elements within it. Right. And since we're a part of nature, we have those elements within us. And then the five elements combine to form the three doshas. Whoa. So okay. the vata dosha is air and ether, empty space. And then the pitta dosha is mostly fire with some water. And kapha dosha is earth and water. Okay. So we all have a unique combination of those three doshas in us. Like we were all born with a little bit more of one or, you know, there could be someone that has one dominant or two equally as dominant. But we all have our own unique proportion. And that'll manifest like the person that has a lot of kapha, earth and water, they're just going to be a little more dense like maybe they'll have bigger muscles or they'll be a little taller um the pitta person fire so that could manifest in the way that their body is built or it could be the person that has a lot of drive and they really love their career and they work every day and wow so it's like that internal fire that makes them go and then vata air and wind so that person might be a little more scattered but also possibly more creative So none of the doshas are good or bad. They just have different qualities, and it can show up in different ways in different people. That's so cool. That makes a lot of sense that how it's, like, mixed with the elements, and those elements make the three doshas. I feel like I'm getting some good information. So can you change doshas? Like, is is that a possible thing? Like, if you are, you know, if how does how does one determine what their what their dosha is first? Well, there's actually two parts to this. So there's what you were born with. That's like your DNA and that doesn't change. So that's your unique percentage of the three doshas within you that was created at conception. How do you know what that is? You can take dosha quizzes. You can um, visit an Ayurveda health counselor. They can, that's where they can look at your tongue, the shape, like how long, if your tongue is long and pointy, that might be more vata. Right. (laughs) Medium would be pitta. And then like a shorter, rounder shape would be kapha. So that's how these shapes start to show up, whether it's in the shape of your body or the shape of certain features. Whoa. Yeah. So the shape of your eyes can give a hint on, and this is called your prakriti. So what you were born with is your prakriti and that doesn't change. But then there's also what's happening right now in your body. And that's your vikriti. And that's actually what dosha is referring to. So the dosha is what's happening right now. And when you're in alignment, so your lifestyle matches with what you were born, Mm. then those those are the same. Whoa. Okay. Okay. So this is why I would assume, like, this is why it's important to know what your dosha is so you can, like, match your life. To complement your dosha? 
Yeah, that's a beautiful way of looking at it. Okay. You know, I don't think that you have to understand your dosha right away. Like for me, it took me six years to really get it and understand it. Wow. <laughs> because all of the quizzes, they can seem a little biased. Like the quiz will say, do you have small eyes or round eyes? And it's yeah. like, who wants to click that they have small eyes? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. So, right. and it can also be really hard to view yourself objectively. That's true. Um, so another example with me, I finally figured out that I was Pitta, but when I first started taking those online quizzes, everything about Pitta, when they're out of balance, it will show that they're aggressive or they like to compete. And I really hate competitive sports, and I don't think of myself as competitive at all. So I didn't see how can I be a Pitta if I'm not a natural athlete and I don't like competing. But mm-hmm. now that I really understand more about how these qualities work, I realize for me it showed up as perfectionism. Because it's like that internal competition. Like I, whatever I put out, I need to be the best at it or do my best. Or wow, that is so cool. Like I hope that's resonating for you guys that are listening. Just because it, this stuff is integrated. It sounds. It's. I feel like it's really integrated in who we are, and we just like I didn't even know it. I didn't even know that that could help you explain. You know why you would feel like you're a perfectionist, or like that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, everything about Ayurveda, it's just like putting the pieces together and like explaining the reasons behind. And this is where understanding the root of your tendencies can help you. Whoa. Oh my God, this is way cool. This is way cool. Because like that's what I like doing with people is I like helping them put together the pieces so they can break through to get to, you know, what they want to create, right? And like this is just a whole nother level of it. And I feel like, Especially with, you know, before we were recording, we were talking about diets and fads and, like, all that stuff. Like, this is not for – this is for someone, like, learning Ayurveda is someone – for someone that, like, has been through all that and is ready to, like, really understand themselves, right? I think that Ayurveda can help anyone, but I think you get the most benefit of it if you – are open to I mean it's a sister science of yoga yeah so for me I was already practicing yoga for a while and anyone that practices yoga just knows how it shifts the way that you think about things and right just the possibilities out there and just knowing what and also knowing like how subtle things can make big differences yeah that's so cool so is there anything, like, how would someone that's listening be able to, like, look at their tongue and kind of get, like, an idea of what they are? I know that's, like, a loaded question. I think the most basic way of telling your prakriti by your tongue is just the shape of it. So a long, narrow tongue. Yeah. And then is the vata a medium size? And that's going to be hard to tell. Yeah. I know. Another thing that the tongue, uh, the information the tongue gives you is the coating on it yeah. so in ayurveda um ama is the word for toxins so when you stick out your tongue first thing in the morning and you, you see a white coat or a yellow coating um that's just a signal of maybe you didn't eat the best things yesterday yeah i feel like that happens to me a lot <laughs> right like when i go out the next morning i everyone needs a tongue scraper so i that's... just ordered a tongue <laughs> scraper i just ordered one yeah they're very inexpensive and so let's talk about the tongue scraper like how far back do you go on the tongue actually i remember angela and i surfed this summer together and i remember being out on the ocean and being like do i need a tongue scraper <laughs> yes you were like yes get one and i just got one like i just ordered it so i, I wasn't a very good student but it's all right the seed was planted the seed in your was mind planted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like what tell us about how to scrape your tongue really quick Okay, so it's super simple. I do it first thing in the morning. Definitely do it before you eat breakfast because you want to get that gunk off before yeah. you swallow it back down with your food or your drink. That makes sense. So start light. You don't need to scrape it. You don't need to injure your tongue or like, anything. Like, it's don't like, like scrape off your taste no, buds. Yeah, <laughs> it's a delicate <laughs> part of your body. <laughs> yeah. So you're just going to stick your tongue out. Um, it's fun to look in the mirror and see what comes off. It's, satis- it's very satisfying. <laughs> That's amazing. And you put it um, as far back as feels comfortable. And if you're just starting out, you know, you don't need to gag yourself or anything like that. So you're going to lightly scrape it and then rinse it with water and then do it a couple more times. Um, Some teachers say seven times. You want to go until there's no more serious gunk coming off of it. If you're eating clean, you know, two or three scrapes probably be fine. And I feel like you told me to like not – you want to just scrape it in one direction the whole time. Yeah, you're just going to take it to the – 
back of your tongue and then scrape it all the way to the front softly so that yeah. it shouldn't hurt. Rinse it with water and then just do that same motion again. And do you just sanitize that thing? Like, I mean, honestly, mine, just I just it. rinse it. And yeah. if there's any res- residual stuff yeah. on there, I wipe it off with a washcloth. Okay. I suppose you could throw it in the dishwasher or like take it downstairs to the sink. And Yeah. Now, is this like an Ayurveda technique or is this just a general like wellness technique? It's Ayurvedic. So okay. it's, the ancient texts want you to scrape your tongue. <laughs> really? Yeah. So there's, a, in Ayurveda, um, regardless of w- what your dosha is, and this is where anyone can just start doing Ayurvedic practices because everyone should tongue scrape regardless. Yeah. Um, there are just some certain lifestyle guidelines that I'm are recommended for, for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. It's a beautiful tongue. <laughs> there you have it, folks. I have a beautiful tongue. I disagree with that, but I'll receive it. Just kidding. Oh my god, this is fun. So, okay, so a tongue scrape. What else could someone as a complete beginner do to live a more Ayurvedic lifestyle? Yeah, so all of us are vata imbalanced pretty much. <laughs> Which means what again? Vata is air and wind, and it's just our lifestyle Vata is information. So just the fact that we have the internet and we're exposed to so much information, it's like that energy elevates and elevates. And the way that we all can balance that is by setting as much of a regular rhythm and routine as possible. So Mm -hmm. it's best through Ayurveda philosophy if you wake up every day at the same time, if you go to bed every day at a similar time, and eat your meals at the same time every day. Wow. Okay, so like kind of have that like schedule yeah so that your body knows what's coming it's like the nervous system can relax it knows that lunch is coming at noon give or take you know half an hour or an hour oh that's the why behind it mm-hmm. it's it's like if you eat lunch every single day at noon at probably eleven thirty, your saliva is starting to get ready for your food so it's yeah. just aiding in the digestion and then yeah. the food knows it's coming and or your body knows the food is coming that makes so much sense too because like I teach and learn a lot about like the subconscious mind and how it basically runs your whole body. So like we don't have to think about digesting our food because our body does it. We don't have to think about swallowing because our body does it. We don't have to think about, oh yeah, we have to get hungry because your body automatically gets hungry. So I guess it would ultimately like save energy if it knew that it was coming. So like you said, it doesn't have to worry about it. Yeah, it saves energy and then it can just do its job more efficiently. Right. That's so cool. So it just helps your body run better all the way around. Exactly. And food takes um, four to six hours to digest, depending what it is. So in Ayurveda, they don't really like snacking. Mm. It's better uh, to have breakfast and then lunch. And maybe an afternoon snack if your lunch and dinner are far apart from each other. Right. So like at three or four o'clock, and then you have dinner, and then you allow it to digest before going to bed. Hmm. So cool. Basically, Ayurveda is like the path of moderation. Whoa. Yeah. So it's like you don't have to be all in and harsh and strict about things. You can just sort of try on like a little bit at a time and and watch how that experience feels for you. Oh, my God. That's that's seriously a game changer because like every time, even though I knew nothing about Ayurveda, like I had this story around it. And my story was that like you had to eat very, very foreign things. And, like, it was almost like I I cut myself off of that. Like, I, I cut off my possibility of, like, being able to practice it. I feel like I had the same sort of experience because when okay. I first heard about it eight years ago, I was really interested and I tried to find books. And I even went to an Ayurveda health counselor at the time. And she told me I was all three doshas, which, yeah. I mean, everyone's all three. But I, I can definitely see that Pitta was ele- is elevated in me. Um and it was just hard for me to find resources that were realistic and easy to understand. Yeah. And that's the whole reason that I created Simple Ayurveda is that I want it to be easy for other people to understand and get and to just start doing little things at a time and notice how that creates a shift. Whoa. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I want to implement this. I really do because, you know, I think, I think balance is like a big um, – conversation that a lot of people have like can you be balanced in your in your life and I think 
it's I don't know it's less about like everything in your life being perfect and more about like daily practices that you can add in to keep yourself healthy and feeling good you know what I mean yeah I love that and I mean we were talking a little bit about yoga and how Ayurveda can show up in a yoga practice yeah and this is exactly how I feel about it like rather than having that perfect yoga practice that I think that I need this is where tuning into what's happening that specific day mm. and tailoring my yoga practice to what I need has been transformational for me. So can you give me an example of that? Yeah. So in Ayurveda, the main principle is like attracts like. And opposite... the main principle of manifestation too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as healing goes, opposites create balance. Okay. So like attracts like, meaning... Like, if you are feeling scattered, Mm -hmm. um, that would be elevated vata. That's that air and wind energy. And then you're going to probably want to go on your computer and Google stuff, right? Okay. So now you're getting more and more and more ideas. And then you might want to eat popcorn. That's what I want to eat. I love popcorn. (laughs) You know, it's like a dry food. So it's sort of creating more wind, air type energy. And just going down like more and more and more of that. So what I would really need if you're feeling like that or, you know, what I, when I feel like that is to sit down and touch the grass yeah. or do something that connects to earth. Grounding. Mm-hmm. Or even eating a sweet potato. This is where food starts to come into play. Okay, okay. So eating... Like a root vegetable, like something literally from the earth is yeah. going to ground you. So that's like how opposites... Yeah, so now... What, what is it called? Opposites? Opposites create attract. balance. Opposites create balance. So like if you're feeling airy-fairy, then you might want to eat a root vegetable. Yes. Okay, that just clicked in my brain. I love it. Yeah, so like if you're a pitta and you're a workaholic and you're really passionate about your project and your face is turning bright red because you're so excited, then, you know, you might want to go out after work and eat chips and salsa or something spicy, and that's just going to keep that energy going uh, more and more fiery. And then if it's hot outside, that's even going to add more to it. So now the season is going to play into what's happening in your body. Oh, my God. It's everything. So then a cooling food would be like cucumber or watermelon or something like that, and that's how you would use a food to bring yourself back down. Whoa. So it's like everything you do can either create more of that same energy or it will take you to the opposite quality. Like that and try and balance you out. Right. So now if we're talking about a yoga practice, if you have a lot of kapha energy, so kapha is earth and water. And if it's if it's imbalanced, then that would show up as like a cough or mucus or mm-hmm. congestion. Um, it could show up as water retention, like extra weight, wow. all of that. So if you have those symptoms, it doesn't really make sense for you to go to restorative yoga class. You're already restored. Right, right, right. <laughs> you need to sweat. You need to move. You need to go for, to Zumba or power yoga fire. or you need some fire. But yet now if you are um, vata and you're overtired and you're anxious, then you need to get to a yin yoga class and relax. That may, that's why I've been I've been literally craving a yin yoga class. Right, because your business, yeah. you're busy, you're talking to all these people, you're yeah. go, go, go. You don't need a yoga class that's going to be more go, go, go. And, and it's so, like, so interesting because I never craved it before. Wow. You could have been at a different stage in your life. I wa- definitely was. Or a different phase. Definitely. Where I wanted to cultivate more of that energy of go, 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 where I feel like I didn't have it in the past. And now I feel like I have it. Now I'm like, okay, I need to slow it down. <laughs> Relax. Yeah, and that's why it's it's a little bit more important, I think, in Ayurveda as far as health and well-being to understand what's happening right now in your body mm-hmm. versus definitely knowing your prakriti, like your DNA, your unique combo of those three doshas. Because... It's fun to know that, but I think as far as, like, your health and happiness and day-to-day life, it's more important to wake up and, am I feeling like sludge today? Did I eat a carton of ice cream last night? I need to go sweat. Right. Or am I exhausted because I've been working so much that I need some Mother Earth energy to comfort me? Wow. That's amazing. That's so cool. That's so, so cool. Do you have... So, you shared that you actually healed your colitis. Yes. Through Ayurveda. Yes. (laughs) Can you share a little bit? I know that you have your own podcast and you share. What's the episode that people can listen to if they want to hear your full story on that? 
It's episode three. It's called My Health Journey. Okay, yeah. So everyone go listen to that, but just share a little bit about that experience of healing yourself because I believe from a manifestation perspective, from a belief system perspective, that it's 100% possible to heal your body, to heal your emotions. If you heal your emotions, heal your body with food and everything, like I believe that that's possible. So what, what was your journey? Basically, for me, I always believed it was possible and especially I feel like a few years ago through the internet, more and more people posting their own personal stories mm-hmm. of healing led me to try different um, diets and protocols. So I've tried vegan. I've tried raw, which didn't really work for me. I've tried paleo. Yeah. I tried GAPS, the gut and psychology syndrome, which is a very strict restriction restrictive diet where I drank a lot of bone broth and wow. didn't eat any sugar or carbs for a few months and through all of these like something might work a little bit or you know um and then I just was sort of at the end of my rope like I've done all of these extreme things and nothing got me to where I didn't need prescription drugs or that I wouldn't occasionally have a flare-up I was mostly healthy I think due to yoga and eating a lot of veggies right but um then I decided to revisit Ayurveda and I started to see little changes right away. Like, I just felt better yeah. doing these things that we're talking about, like noticing day-to-day what I need in a day. And that pushed me to jump in and sign up for health counselor training. And through the program that I'm studying, the first three months, you you follow your own protocol before you can teach it to anyone else. Yeah, that's and, cool. Yeah, so as I started basically eating super simple – Not that everyone that follows Ayurveda has to do that, but that's what worked for me to heal was to just get my meals down to those three meals a day, very simple, basic vegetarian ingredients, cooking at home, and then all of these other little things like tailoring my yoga practice to what I need and reducing things that aggravate the dosha that's causing my imbalance. So Ayurveda is like all about getting to the root cause. It's not putting a Band-Aid. I love that. That's so in alignment with the work that I do, too, like getting to the root cause. Well, how do you get to the root cause in Ayurveda of the imbalance? I think um, noticing what is imbalanced in you, like if you have a disease or an illness, looking at the qualities of that disease. Mm -hmm. And this is where a health counselor can help you. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, for example, in me, I had colitis. It ends in IS, which generally means inflammation, Mm. which, like, it's literally redness inside some organs. Yeah. So redness is heat, and that's pitta. Oh, my God. Yeah. So now I'm going to, like, look. I had to take a serious look at all of the things I did that contributed to heat within me. So I was eating, you know, spicy salmon rolls. I was going to hot yoga every day. Wow. Um, I was, And also, alcohol and caffeine are major pitta aggravators. So I was drinking alcohol two or three times a week. I drank an iced coffee every single day. And um, in Ayurveda, iced drinks aren't recommended, like really cold foods, because it's sort of like throwing ice or water on your digestive fire. Wow. So I, you know, first I changed. So an example of a subtle change that happened for me over the past year and a half is I drink an iced coffee every single day. So then I switched it to hot. So I was still drinking a full calf hot coffee every day. Mm -hmm. Then I started looking at caffeine alternatives. And I have a Ninja coffee maker that I love. So I put, I started putting two thirds coffee and one third chicory root tea, which is an all natural tea that tastes a lot like coffee to me that's decaf. And I started whittling down to like a half calf coffee. Then I switched to green tea and matcha lattes right. that are yummy and creamy with coconut milk. And then I met with my Ayurveda health counselor and she broke it to me and she said, you know, caffeine is caffeine whether you want to drink a chai tea or matcha <laughs> green tea or, <laughs> or whatever so else. True. And I made the decision that I was ready to let that go. So now I haven't had caffeine in four months. <laughs> oh my God, I have the chills right now. This is so powerful. Yeah, and it's, like, something so simple that, you know, like, just... So you eliminated those hot foods that were contributing to your pitta um, imbalance. Or in, right. Your, and so now, if I want to eat something spicy once in a while, I'm going to just notice, like, is it a cold day outside? That might be a day that I am going to eat the Mexican food with the spices on it. 
Right. But if it's the middle of summer and I'm hot and I've been yelling at my kids because I'm aggravated, I'm yeah. like, whoa, my pits is getting up there. Yeah. Like, I need to rain it down. I'm going to eat some watermelon <laughs> or have a very bland dinner tonight to sort of, like, level out. Wow. Okay. So you started to see, like, these incremental shifts in your body. Like, you felt, I'm assuming you felt better. Mm-hmm. You weren't having as many flare-ups, would you say? I wasn't really having any, so then I started experimenting with reducing my medication. Wow. So I would take, like... What I, were you taking? I took um, six pills of Asacol a day, which is, like, an NSAID, a non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug. Oh. And my docs say I need that for the rest of my life, but I don't believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We can't believe everything our doctors say, but their advice is, you know, valid. Yeah. I mean, I definitely still see my doctor. So just because I don't listen to him doesn't mean I don't see him and check in with him. It's not like, I'm healed. I'm never going back to you again. Bye. Nope. I'm going in to check in on in January, actually, (laughs) with him. I go see a specialist um, twice a year just to check in. But um, so I, I just cut like one pill in half. So then I was down to like five and a half. A day because I took three in the morning and three at night, and that's I. You should always do this with your checking with your doctor if you're gonna try something like this, or at least working with a super experienced Ayurveda health counselor. Definitely. Um, so I just like very very slowly reduced it like over weeks and weeks and weeks, and then I wasn't taking any medication anymore, and then I had a colonoscopy, and then that's when um, my doctor said there's no signs of colitis. So that was oh like the God. best day ever. Like- <laughs> I were you crying like yeah I was just like I have it in writing I was that is so cool and so I that was in April and it's December now and I haven't been taking any medication or anything and wow which for me is that motivation for when I do want to go back to my old habits like when I want to have an iced coffee or something like that I'm like okay well I know what the consequence of that is right and maybe one would be okay yeah but it's a slippery slope yeah and like why if you're just gonna have one like why right like, yeah <laughs> it's like one glass of wine for what I mean I guess so it's fine <laughs> for me though also another piece of it is just feeling so much freedom because then I reduced the caff- like just in the example of the caffeine I felt addicted to it like I yeah. needed that coffee and I was gonna have a bad day or a headache if I didn't have it and then once I got down to no caffeine, I for a while I would still have like a hot tea in the morning. It was just that habit. But now I don't need anything. So it's like the freedom, freedom. that I don't – if I'm on vacation, I don't have to go find a coffee shop first thing in the morning. Or... Wow, well, yeah. that's I'm totally like first thing in the morning, <laughs> I drink my water, and then I'm like, coffee, like I need it. And that's the, that's the shift is like actually you don't need it. You just are addicted to it and you really want it. Like – I mean, there's times to give yourself grace and... Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This is so interesting. I'm so, like, lit up over this. Um, Wow. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Like, your story is amazing, and I hope that it gives a lot of people hope and possibility of what this practice can bring into your life. So I would ask, like, if someone's interested in, obviously, booking a session with you, you, you're an online... Um, entrepreneur, so you can help people from all over the world, right? Yes, I do everything online. Okay, cool. So if someone's like, hey, look at my tongue, you can just look at it on Zoom. Yeah, you'll send me a picture ahead of time, okay. just like a snapshot from your cell phone, that way yeah. you can like look at it real close, and then on Zoom, yeah, you'll just stick your tongue out, and I'll say, oh, okay. <laughs> so good. Thank you so much for being here. Where can people connect with you on social? I'm on Instagram at simple underscore Ayurveda and I'm also on Facebook there's a free group it's the simple Ayurveda community group and you can connect with other Ayurveda enthusiasts from all over the world so cool I'm I gotta get in that group I gotta get in that group listen to the podcast too simple Ayurveda podcast I'll link all of Angela's information up in the show notes and we'll probably bring her back on and have more conversations because I'm super interested in this now and I I like had this intuitive nudge that I need to learn more about Ayurveda but like I said I just believe that like I was it wasn't attainable for some reason so if that's you listening and you you're like me and you're like that's some fancy schmancy thing (laughs) it's actually like some ancient wisdom that Angela's making really really simple is there any free resource on your website that they can go to to 
learn more now? Oh yeah, I have a free quiz. It's called the Modern Day Dosha Quiz, and I made it as simple and easy to understand as possible because a lot of the quizzes, like I said, they're they're very hard to be objective. And this one is more like, did you go through a breakup recently? Yeah. Have you moved a lot? Okay, so cool. it's like examining your lifestyle now, like, and gives you tips on how to find balance. Okay, and that's on that's on simpleayurveda.com, and the first homepage right there, you can just click and you'll see the quiz. Launching a 30 hour continuing education course for yoga teachers. So it's called Simple Ayurveda for Yoga Teachers. It is completely web based. You don't even need Facebook. Uh, it, it'll be held February 1st through the 28th in 2019. And it's a weekly module. The first week will be the basics of Ayurveda, so understanding doshas and what your students' doshas are and what's happening with the seasons and how that relates to Ayurveda. And the second week will be sequencing and tailoring your classes according to all of those things. And then the third week, we're going to jump into the Bhagavad Gita, which talks about Ayurveda and yoga all in one text. That's why I love it so much. And then the fourth week will be you as a yoga teacher and your dharma. And that comes from another ancient Ayurvedic text. So awesome. So if you're a yoga teacher, you're curious, or you already know about Ayurveda, this is a really nice addition to add to your practice and your teaching. So check that out. It'll be linked up in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening to the Badass Manifester podcast. I love manifesting Mondays with you. And there's so much more in store right here. The best way to manifest love is to give love. If you loved what you heard today, subscribe to the Badass Manifester podcast. Leave a review on iTunes. Let me know how much you dig the energy here. All of my social is linked up in the show notes. So screenshot this episode, tag me on Instagram, and let me be part of your real-time journey. For more info on me, feel free to go to my website, manifestwithash.com. Repeat after me. I am my own power source. I am the master of my energy, and I deserve everything that I desire. Go get them.